Have you been struggling to hit your local repeater with our SuperCode plug? A common issue some users run into when installing the SuperCode plug on their Anytone radio is figuring out exactly how to set it up for their local repeaters. This issue occurs because the SuperCode plug itself initially comes set up for hotspot frequencies, simplex frequencies, and local repeaters use duplex frequencies. We'd love to be able to provide all of them, but unfortunately there's way too many to be able to do that efficiently. So if you want it to work with your local repeater, there's a little bit more you have to do. Today, we'll use a repeater local to us to show you how to program your SuperCode plug into your radio and work with your local repeater. So first step, make sure your radio is turned on and plugged into your computer, and then go ahead and open up the programming software. In this case, we're using the software for the 878UV2+, the brand new radio. We'll just let that open up here real quick. There we go, here's the software. And from here we can go up to File and then Open. And for, don't worry about saving this. Uh, and now we can install our Super Code Plug. Um, so I have the file here, the Super Code Plug. And then, and, you know, since we are going to be using it with a repeater, it really doesn't matter which frequency you pick from. Uh, now with a hotspot, you would pick whatever frequency that your hotspot's set up on. Uh, but we are going to be changing the frequency anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. So we'll do 525, and then pick the one for the 8782. Uh, we can see all the different versions there. There we go, perfect, and open. We'll just give it a second as it opens everything up. There we go, perfect. Now, this has everything we need, except uh, we can see the frequencies over here are simplex and they are for a hotspot. So we need to actually change them and make it a repeater and then we're going to change the power to, to high instead of low uh, since we actually want to be able to reach out to the repeater. So to do this, uh, what you want to do is go up to Tool and then Export, then click on Channel and we are going to export this to the desktop and let's give it a name here. There we go. Go ahead and export those channels. And this will export it as a file that we can actually open up in Excel. Now you can use a variety of different programs as any kind of uh, you know, numbers program uh, you should be able to use to make this happen. Um, now sometimes the window is difficult to see, but you want to hit export down at the bottom. There we go. Export complete. Perfect. So now we can just minimize this for a second. And over here on our desktop, we see the channels export that we just did. So go ahead and double click on it, and that will open it in Excel. Uh, but like I said, there's a variety of free programs you can use for this. Uh, if you have Excel, use it. Uh, I'm, you could probably even import this into Google Docs too. So not a huge limitation there. They all work slightly differently, but uh, we'll show you how it works in Excel. Uh, so now we can see all of the different columns. Uh, we're going to leave most of these alone, but we are going to change a few. Uh, so I'm going to make them a little bit larger so we can see what we're working with. Okay, there we go. So I've basically extended all of these names up top so we can actually read them and see what they're for. Uh, now, unfortunately, there, I missed one there. CSV doesn't retain that information, this file type. Um, so, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can get by without them, uh, but we want to actually have this information here so we can see the, the different items that we'll be changing. So, uh, first up, uh, we are going to change all of these frequencies. For the most part, all of the ones that have 446525, we are going to change that to our repeater frequency. Now, this will not include, uh, I believe there's going to be a few in here, if I can get this to work. Uh, that's great. Oh, there we go. So this will not include the weather channels, and I believe we should be able to find them in here. Yep, here's the weather channels. Uh, so we are going to leave them alone. Uh, we don't want to touch them. They're perfectly fine as they are. And then I believe, I believe everything else 
should be that 446525. Yep, there's a couple VFO channels. We will leave them alone as well. Uh, so we are just going to change these channels right here. So let's go find out what we need to change it to. Uh, the best way to do this, you may already know it um, for your local repeater, uh, but if we just go to repeater book, we can find out the information for our local repeater. Okay. Then from here, we should be able to, where is it? North American repeaters. Uh, so just go through the process to select your area. <clears throat> We're looking for a DMR repeater in this case. Oops. Okay. And here we go. Here's the Kansas City repeater. Uh, this is the one we want right here, so go ahead and click on that. Uh, and like I said, as long as it's a DMR repeater, this will work for you. So now we just need to change all of those to the information that our repeater provides. So we can see the downlink here is 444.4625. So I'm just going to copy this here. And we will go over to the Excel sheet and change all of the downlink. Okay, so there's a variety of different ways you can do this. Uh, now, probably the simplest way to do it is just type your fre frequency up here. Um, our 444-4625, which is our downlink frequency. And then what you can simply do is click on that square now and take this little box and drag it. Now this will replace, I'll just stop right here so you can see, it will replace everything in its path. Uh, now you can do a find and replace. There's a variety of different ways you can do that, uh, but that will change both the transmit and receive. So I'm just gonna do this and take it down to our weather channels. There we go. And then we'll start below that here. There we go, same thing then drag this little square down. And we'll take that all the way down to the bottom. And don't wanna overwrite those channels. Let's see, oh, so we already have, looks like I already have a couple repeaters in here. So uh, if you have those, just don't bother overwriting them, obviously. Uh, so we're going to overwrite all of those channels. There we go, perfect. And now uh, what I need to do, and it looks like those are actually for this repeater already. Look at that. Uh, so now we're going to go back out here to our web browser and get the uplink frequency. So that's 449-4625. Perfect. And we are going to do the exact same thing on the uh, transmit side. So put that in here. Perfect and then just go ahead and, and extend this all the way down. Like I said, there's more than one way to do this, uh, but this is the easiest to grasp. So that's what we're showing you. We'll put our frequency in here and then extend this all the way down as well. There we go, perfect, 449.4625. Now we have both our receive and transmit. Uh, now what I wanna do is change the power uh, because we don't want this on low power, we want this to be high power. So uh, we'll change the power to high. And same thing, you can just drag this all the way down. Just like that and then uh, I suppose we, those should be you shouldn't be able to transmit on them anyway, so it's not gonna matter if we change the power to high. Um, there we go, perfect. Now you can change the power level here to turbo. Uh, that won't cause any harm. 
uh, it will run your battery down a little bit faster. So if you're talk talking a lot and you can hit it on high, uh, definitely you know use it that way. But if you need turbo, what I usually do is just keep all my channels set to high. And then when I need turbo power, I just click a button to change it to turbo. Um, but I like the default set to high. But if you have, uh, have a preferred default, this is the time to change it because it will change on everything. So. There we go, perfect. Okay, so we don't have much left, uh, but we do need to change this uh, TX permit. Instead of different color code, we're going to change it to always. I click on that, and then we'll just change that for everything, except our um, weather channels. We don't need to do that. That can stay the same. Like I said, it shouldn't make a difference, though. Okay, there we go. We'll just take this all the way down to the bottom. Perfect. And now we need to check our color code itself, make sure we have it correct. Uh, so go back over to your web browser or your repeater information. And so this repeater, it would appear as though it wants color code four. There we go. So let's go ahead and enter that in. And time slot one uh, for all other Brandmeister talk groups. So we want color code four in time slot one. Go back over to our Excel sheet. Okay, so color code four. We'll repeat that all the way down here. Doesn't matter if you do that for the weather channels because they don't have color codes anyway. Perfect. And then time slot. Time slot, we'll double check. Yep, time slot one for all other Brandmeister talk groups. That is what we're using here, so we want time slot one. These are set up for two, so just type one in there, and then go ahead and repeat that for everything. There we go, perfect. So at this point, uh, we should have changed everything, so this will work uh, with your radio now. So what you want to do is go to File, and then Save As, and we are going to save this as a CSV. We can see here. Uh, so I'm just going to change the name real quick. So, oops. go now we know what it is and saving that to this PC perfect so go ahead and save that there we go now it's saying you will lose some uh, some loss uh, all these rows will reformat uh, which we understand so okay so get out of here and there we go there's our edited channel list so now what you do is you go back to your CPS go up to tool this time import, just say OK, and then click on channel. And now we can import our edited channels. There we go, and then you'll have to move this up a little bit. If you have a bigger screen, this works better. This tiny laptop doesn't always work so well for it. Click on import, and there we go. Now we just, there we go, import complete. So we should be all set there. So now that we have everything imported back into the CPS, uh, we just need to make a couple more changes before it will work properly on the radio. So let's dive in here. Um, first thing we need to do is, and this will be true for any super code plug, whether you use it with a hotspot or a local repeater, uh, just click on the digital menu on the left hand side and then click on radio ID list. Now here is where you will want to put your uh, first name and your call sign. and then your radio ID. Now, if you don't remember it, just go to radioid.net, click on database, and then DMR user ID search. And then from here, you can put your call sign in. Oops. And search. And there we go. There's my DMR ID, so you can copy that over. Really convenient tool. 
because I oftentimes don't remember my DMR ID. So go ahead and put that in the radio. There we go, say okay. Uh, so we've done that. Uh, now at this point, you make sure your radio is still plugged in and turned on. Connect it via the COM port and we can write that to the radio. Now I want to check a couple of things in optional settings just to make sure this will be nice and usable. Uh, so channel, yep, I like to have that set up for channel. Um, there we go. Let's see what zones we have in here. Okay, it would appear as though we don't have any zones. Uh, so, you know, if this happens, we've got to make sure we have zones. Um, let's see. So we'll make a sky zone and add everything to it. And then we can make, let's see, make another zone real quick. 50 states. And we will add all of the states to it. Oops, don't want those, I just want the states. There we go. Perfect. We'll make one for everything outside of the US. Uh, now, generally, the super code plug comes with this, so it's possible we over, I don't think we overwrote anything, uh, so maybe the, the version I have is kind of a, a beta version of it for the new radio, so it may not have had that in it, uh, but yours should have this already. But if it doesn't, it, or if you were to accidentally get rid of it, it's really easy to remake your zones. So we'll add our international talk groups here. Perfect, there we go. And let's see, is that, I guess we do need them as well. Here we go, that should be everything. Uh, that's really all you should need at this point. Uh, I always like to make a couple changes in optional settings. Uh, if you change the power on, you can you know, put your name and call sign in here too. Uh, it makes it look cool, but certainly not required. Um, so we can do, do some fun stuff like that. Um, you can set your default startup channel, uh, but that stuff is not required. But you will need to make sure you put that radio ID in there. It will not work. So we can see all our channels are in here. So make sure your radio is still turned on and plugged in. Click the COM port button. There we go. We can see it there. And then write this to the radio. Now, in this case, I already have the contact list in my radio, uh, but if this is your first time installing the super code plug, make sure you check that. <clears throat> and there we go, it's written to the radio, so now we can just wait for it to turn on. There we go, you can see that uh, screen, the boot screen we added there. Perfect, so now uh, we have our different zones here, sky, uh, the sky parrot, and then we have our uh, international outside the US zone that we created, and the NOAA weather stations. We have all of our 50 states. So all of our zones are here, so let's see if we have the parrot. Uh, I believe it should be here somewhere. There's sky parrot, perfect. So let's give this a shot. Now this will be talking to our local repeater with the super code plug. Testing, one, two, three. This is W3AMG testing out the local repeater uh, with my new super code plug. Testing, one, two, three. This is W3AMG testing out the local repeater uh, with my new super code plug. There we go, check that out, how cool is that? So we've taken the super code plug, which is really designed for a hotspot, and then added it to the radio uh, really, it didn't take very long. This is a pretty simple process. It will work for any you know, local DMR, Brandmeister-based repeater, uh, and you can do the same thing. Our Super Code Plug is essential for any beginner in DMR radio, and now you know how to use it with your local repeater. To find out how to make your very own code plug, click the link below. We'll walk you through every step of creating the perfect code plug that fits your needs. Thanks again for watching. I'm Cody, W3AMG.